We introduced quantum mechanics from the many path formulation, um, but we saw that it's very difficult to uh, do practical applications with this approach uh, unless you can use the semi-classical approximation, there is very little you can do. In order to get a more practical uh, version of quantum mechanics, which is equivalent to the many path formulation, we need to um, derive an equation which uh, is local in time, that is there is only one time which appears in uh, the expression and not an integral over time. Uh, if you prefer, the equivalent in classical mechanics is the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is uh, only a function of a single time. So we know how to express the amplitude of probability to go from one event to another um, as a sum over the path of exponential i times the action divided by h bar. And we know that for this we need to take into account all the possible paths which connect both events. But we want an equation which uh, has only one time in it. So let's take, for instance, the final time for the event B, which we call t plus delta t for convenience. The question is now, what is the amplitude of probability to find the particle in B? And we don't care where it started from, uh, so we don't care of the event A. We just want to know if I have a chance to find the particle in B or not. So it's not exactly the same question as finding the amplitude of probability to go from one event to another. Here we are looking only at one event. So we will uh, it's not the same object and we will um, use a different letter. We will call it a Psi. And this is uh, a function of space and time. So we will call um, the position for B uh, capital X. So to find the particle in B, it has to be somewhere uh, else just before. So if we look at the time just before, a tiny instant of time just before, uh, we still see that the particle can be anywhere and uh, we have to take into account all the possibilities for the particle to be anywhere and then propagate uh, towards B uh, in order to write our amplitude of probability to find the particle in B. So if we look at one particular position at time t, um, we have an amplitude of probability for the particle to be uh, at this position at, at this time t. Um, and then we have an amplitude of probability to go from uh, this event at t um, to the event in b, uh, which we know how to write because it's simply uh, exponential i times the action for this specific path. But we have to sum over all possible initial position. Um, that means we have to sum over all uh, possible x um, in order to sum over all this incoming path uh, reaching b in the at the time t plus delta t. So let us uh, write the action for one of these paths. And remember that um, delta t is infinitely small, so we don't need to integrate over t, we just have um, uh, the integral over t becomes simply the factor delta t. We write the Lagrangian as a difference of the kinetic energy uh, and the potential energy. But here the kinetic energy involves the velocity and the velocity for this path uh, can be expressed very simply as the difference uh, between capital X and small x divided by the difference between t plus delta t and t, so that's just delta t. For the potential, um, it's a function of x, so in principle we should um, we, uh, consider any possible value of x uh, between uh, um, along this path for the value of the potential. However, it turns out that the result um, uh, is the same if we say take uh, small x or capital X. So we will just uh, take the final value for x, which is um, with big X in B. So we now combine uh, our expressions for k and the potential v in order to get the expression for the action. So we now substitute in the amplitude of probability in order to get So 
So let's have a quick look at what we did. So in the first equality, we just uh, reported the expression for s into uh, our expression for the amplitude of probability. In the second equality, uh, we use the fact that the exponential of a sum is the product of the exponentials. Uh, in the third equality, we use the fact that the potential is a function of capital X and then therefore doesn't depend on small x and can be uh, uh, factorized in front of the sum. It is now a good time to consider a change of variables. So we will introduce uh, Xi as a difference between capital X and, and small x. So of course, because the sum over x runs for all possible values of the position, it doesn't matter if we sum over x or if we sum over Xi. And we also need to change a small x in the amplitude of probability into um, capital X minus Xi. We recognize here a phasor, and here we are summing over the phasors. And more importantly, this, uh, the phase um, is um, uh, usually extremely large because we divide by delta t, which we choose to be infinitely small. So uh, this means that we are going to sum over all the phasors in all direction, and this uh, term is essentially uh, going to give zero, except when uh, xi itself is infinitely small. In this case, uh, we can't uh, neglect the sum over the phasors because we are going to uh, have essentially the phasors aligned in the same direction. So because uh, only xi infinitely small is going to contribute, we can do a Taylor expansion of uh, the amplitude of probability. So we, I wrote here a, a Taylor expansion for Psi um, up to second order in Xi. The lowest order doesn't depend on Xi, so um, if I only keep this one, it's like if I do not allow the particle to move at all. Uh, the first order, we will see, uh, doesn't contribute, so that's why we need to go to the second order. The derivatives do not depend on Xi, so um, that means we have three terms to calculate uh, when we isolate the sum of our xi. So the first term, let's just um, define it as a constant c. Um, the second term, we are summing over all possible xi, um, which can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, the exponential is even in xi, but then we multiply by xi, which is odd. So we sum over negative and positive um, contributions of an odd function that's going to be zero. Only the last term is going to be uh, relevant here, and we can show if we plug that into Mathematica that we will have the same constant uh, time a factor h bar delta t i over m. So if we combine it to our expression for the uh, amplitude of probability this gives. The constant n is a normalization constant we can choose, because we, we are free to choose uh, the normalization we want, so we can choose it to be 1 over c. In this way, it cancels with c. Now we want to take a Taylor expansion of the amplitude of probability because we have delta t infinitely small. And we only keep the first order uh, in delta t. So let's take also a Taylor expansion of the exponential term keeping only the first order in delta t. Now we multiply by um, the term between the brackets, but we only keep the first order in delta t. So the psi at x and t on both sides cancel, and we can also neglect the second order term in delta t. 
So th and we see that we can also factorize by uh, delta t. And we end up with the famous Schrodinger equation. This is one of the most important uh, equations in physics, uh, maybe even more important than uh, the Einstein's E equal mc squared, uh, because it led to so many applications, uh, not only in physics, but also in chemistry, in technology, etc., etc. You'll probably have to learn how to solve this equation in uh, future courses in uh, physics or even in, in chemistry. Um, you can solve it analytically for simple forms of the potentials like harmonic oscillators or square well potentials, uh, but very often we need to use a computer anyway to solve this equation. You will see soon when you will study wave and oscillation that um, waves equations are very uh, similar in the sense that they have time derivatives and special derivatives. Um, so Schrodinger equation is an example of a wave equation. And for this reason we call the amplitude of probability to find a particle at some position x and time t a wave function. Here is an example of uh, what uh, wave functions um, look like for the electrons in the hydrogen. Um, we see that um, the resulting wave functions for the different energy level um, are very uh, different than what we initially guessed with our simple semi-classical model where we assumed that the electron was moving in circular orbits around uh, the proton. Uh, but that will be generally the case in any quantum application.